Good morning. Today we'll be talking about oral health and the importance of preventing cavities, not just in young people, but in adults as well. Good morning, Dr. Akiode. It's a pleasure having you with us. Now, we want to know what is, we don't talk enough about dental and the mouth and dental issues on this program. So can you just remind us what is oral health and what are the basics of oral hygiene? Oral health is um, taking good care of your mouth. Anything to do with the mouth is called the oral cavity. Now, um, it starts with simple brushing your teeth in the morning, um, after meals, and especially before you go to bed at night. Removing plaque, what to brush off every time you brush is called plaque, it's soft. And the basis, of most things we do in dentistry is removal of plaque. Once plaque is in your mouth, that, that means the dirt. Once it's in your mouth, it causes a host of other issues. And um, it's unimaginable what issues we come across in dentistry. So it's very important to make sure that we take good care of our mouth. We go to the dentist regularly. We um, also floss. Flossing is so important. Most people around here don't floss at all. And the dentists also need to take very good x-rays. They need to know how to read the x-rays and explain in a very simple manner to the patient so that they can follow the instructions and keep their teeth for a lifetime. That way you're able to chew properly. You're able to eat and smile. You're able to um, have um, a nice, smell from the mouth, you, you don't have mouth odor, you don't end up with infection and um, a host of other problems. Now, that's, I mean, what you've told us, actually, you've almost summarized my next question, which were, <laughs> what, are, what, were the, what are the signs of poor oral hygiene? So what are the pluses? You know, what would you find if a person had good oral hygiene? And what would you find if a person had poor oral hygiene? So we can all, uh, as people, just go around and check everybody. So that, that one's good, <laughs> that one's bad, and so on. Um, it's um, a lot of times you don't even notice that someone has poor oral hygiene, especially in this part of the world where you have people having nice set of teeth, white set of teeth, smiling all over the place. And you just think, oh, Nigerians have good sets of teeth. They don't need to visit the dentist. They don't need to go to the um, dentist. Um, so most of the time when people start noticing something will be when it's a little bit too late they'll start noticing bleeding gums calculus meanwhile remember i said something about plaque plaque is what we remove when we brush it's stopped now within 24 to 20, 48 hours we end up with the hard stuff which is calculus or tartar so you might see calculus or tartar around the teeth you might notice swollen gums um, smell from the mouth, um, which is called mouth odor. You might notice um, the teeth starting to shift. That is now the advanced stage of um, bad oral health, which is called periodontitis, advanced stage of periodontitis. Um, even the mild stage of periodontitis, the teeth start to shift and there will be spaces between the teeth. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Or sometimes you have pain, not always. Now, sometimes you see people and they have these sort of black things around their teeth, you know. Is that the calculus? Yes, that is calculus. Calculus is hard. It's very, very hard. On the x-ray, you see calculus. If you happen to see calculus on the x-ray, it appears similar to bone. It actually destroys the bone and eats away at the bone. So remember I said that within 24 to 48 hours, calculus will form from the plaque and start causing destruction of the bone. And so sometimes you'll find people coming to the dentist by age 40, their teeth are starting to move. I actually saw someone um, about an hour ago. We need to, there the about 10 teeth that were loose. There was so much infection. It was bleeding. It, it, it was just, I felt so sad that um, this had been going on with him. And he told me that he had been going to the dentist. He had been cleaning his mouth, going for regular cleaning, 
what they call around here SMP. And um, this is still happening to him. So that just shows you the importance of us taking x-rays, especially the um, vitamin intraoral x-rays, making sure that there are no bone loss. And if there's bone loss, we take care of, we find out what exactly the cause of the bone loss is. Usually it's the calculus that destroys the bone and we remove the calculus. So when we do the cleaning, we we tend to have to take the x-rays over to make sure that all the calculus has been removed. If not, our job is not done. Very important. So what are the common oral problems people have? Number one is the bleeding gums. The other one is cavities, small holes. It starts off as a small hole, either on the top of the tooth or in between the tooth. If it starts on the top of the tooth, that's easy to detect. If, even when the x-ray is not taken, you will detect that. But most cavities will start in between the teeth because most people don't floss. So if you don't floss, there's no way you can clean in between the teeth because the bristles of the brush will clean all around the teeth. It will clean the surface, the top part of the teeth, but it would not clean in between the teeth. So that's why we need to floss. Now, if you go to the dentist and bite wing x-rays are not taken, Mind you, bite wing x-rays are simple x-rays that are taken to show you, they zoom into in between the teeth to show you where cavities are forming. If you are able to arrest those cavities or holes on time, then you can save the tooth from having other issues like root canals. All you will need to do is have fillings or even prevent it in the first place. You don't even have to have That's fillings. That's actually the floss. focus. That's actually the focus of the program is how do we prevent cavities in people, young people as well as adults. So I don't know if there's a difference between the two, but we can actually deal with that issue right now. So we've talked about cavities. We know what the cavities are. We know they can start inside, outside, et cetera. How do we prevent young people? Because I know young people nowadays, you know, in, in the past, your looks, your smile wasn't that important. But now everybody's on social media, taking pictures, that beautiful smile, you know, taking their selfies. It's, it's very important. And nobody wants to mess with their teeth. So I think a lot of people are very interested now because of the beauty aspect of it. How do we prevent cavities, even apart from the discomfort? The first thing to do is make sure you brush and floss regularly, especially before you go to bed at night. Now, um, the reason why it's so important to brush after meals and before you go to bed at night is because when you let me talk about going to bed now when you sleep there's no saliva flowing in your mouth and there's a tendency for um bacteria to just settle around the teeth but with the bacteria will feed on the plaque the plaque is the dirt around the teeth and the mouth the bacteria will feed on the plaque and the byproduct, or if I could say the purple of bacteria, is acid. The acid is what gets deposited on the teeth and eats away on the teeth. And, um, excuse me. and so um, you start having cavities. Now, brushing the surfaces, the top part of the teeth, you can prevent cavities by brushing, but more, more importantly, especially in kids, by applying what called sealants. The other thing is um, having fluoride. I know some people say, oh, what if I'm allergic to fluoride and all? And yet, in my 25, 35 years of practicing dentistry, I'm yet to see one person that is allergic to fluoride. So maybe there is, I don't know but I'm yet to see. So fluoride is very important and fluoride in water is supposed to be one part per million. So it's such a minute amount. The fluoride in the toothpaste is not enough. Unfortunately, we don't have fluoride in water in Nigeria. We don't even have water supply in Nigeria, but we could use fluoride mouthwashes to rinse both adults, especially young adults and kids, they do need it. Because um, when we're young, the teeth are very soft. 
but with fluoride, the teeth become stronger and they're more resistant to cavities or holes. So it's very, very important. So flossing is another thing, making sure that we're flossing before we go to bed at night because the, the saliva is not flowing, the bacteria settles in, and by flossing, you get rid of um, plaque in between the teeth and you tend to ward away the, um, the bacteria that could cause cavities. So it's all about prevention, prevention, prevention. Honestly, you're absolutely right. How often then do people need to do things like change their toothbrush? Simple things. Well, you've talked a lot about brushing, but not about the practical things. How long should we brush for? What kind of toothbrush? Some people prefer the hard toothbrushes. Other people prefer the soft ones. Which one is ideal? And then how often should one change one's toothbrush? Now the toothbrush, um, they always recommend that we change our toothbrushes within three months. You should use a soft toothbrush. Even with using a soft toothbrush, you should make sure that you're not brushing hard. You're supposed to brush ever so gently, massaging gently around the teeth and make sure that if your toothbrush is, the, the bristles, they're spraying there spreading out that means you're brushing too hard you're not supposed to brush hard even with a hard or uh, even with a soft toothbrush some people say oh but i won't uh, my teeth will not be clean if i don't brush hard that's not it if your teeth don't feel clean if you run your tongue around the teeth they don't feel clean you should go again and just brush ever so gently because the, you don't want to um, get rid of the enamel the outer covering which gives it the whiteness if you get rid of the enamel which gives the teeth the whiteness the teeth tend to get um they tend to start looking darker so make sure you always always brush gently and just massage the gums and the teeth together thank you for that information now another question a lot of people want to talk about is tooth sensitivity is there an association between bad oral health and tooth sensitivity, or are they not connected at all? Bad oral health. Um, in this part of the world, most people tend to brush hard. That will cause tooth sensitivity because you're like, like I said, you're brushing away the enamel. That's the outer covering of the teeth. The enamel gives the teeth the ultimate protection. It's very hard. It's even harder than, than bone. So if you brush away the enamel, the te your teeth are going to get very, very sensitive. The other thing that will cause the uh, other things that will cause sensitivity um, is or are uh, um, loss of bone around the teeth. When you lose bone around the teeth, if your tongue and uh, your um, gum tend to recede, and the uh, the roots of the teeth become exposed. So that way, you're going to have sensitivity of the teeth. Um, having holes in the teeth will also cause sensitivity. And when you eat or drink water, sometimes you feel this sensitivity. Um, it's usually a sharp pain. And that is because you have a hole. It doesn't always mean you have a hole, but it's also an indication that there might, might be something going on. So that those are the major cause of sensitivity from the teeth. Now, what about bad breath? You mentioned that actually bad breath can occur. Is bad breath linked to the cavities as well? Definitely. Now, um, if you have cavities in your mouth, they act like dustbin. So you can imagine dustbin just packing dirt all the time. Before you know it, the dirt, the trash container will start smelling because you're packing day one, day two, day three um, dirt into the trash container. The other thing that will cause bad breath is the calculus, the um, presence of calculus, the hard stuff around the teeth and the um, roots. That plus the new plaque forming and the dirt, the bacteria. Because now, once you have calculus in your mouth, you have loads, loads of bacteria in your mouth, just playing around your mouth. So your mouth is definitely going to smell. Thank you for coming on the program, Wanola. It's always a pleasure to have a guest who is ready to share their experience with us. So can you tell us 
what is your experience with cavities? When did you get them? How did you get them? And how old were you or what has been done? Okay, so I started um, visiting the dentist in 2004. That was when I just graduated from university. I noticed that um, one of my tooth, the one here, I used to feel some pain and some sensation when I eat, especially when I eat sweet things. And so um, I went to see the dentist, but um, the, the dentist was near my school, somewhere in Lasso, because I finished from Lagos State University. And the dentist looked at my teeth and um, he said that particular tooth needed to be either taken out or I do a root canal. And of course, I didn't know what a root canal meant. So I asked him to explain and he said that it is actually treating a tooth from the root so that it doesn't, so that you don't have to take it out. And that it's that actually a better option doing a root canal than removing your tooth so that you can save the tooth. And so um, it was more expensive, very expensive, much more expensive than doing an extraction. But because my smile is very important to me, as you can see, my smile is very important to me and um, I didn't want to lose that tooth. And so I did a root canal. It was a, it was a long procedure in the sense that I had to be going back and I was living in Ikoi. So I had to be going back there, I think every two weeks for him to check it, for him to put some things inside. And you know, he treated it and the, the, the tooth stayed. So um, I met Dr. Shade about three years ago when the, um, I, I didn't put a crown on the root canal. I just put, there's this whitish thing. Dr. Shade, what do you call that whitish thing? The thing they put on top. It's temporary, a temporary filling. Okay, yes. Yeah. So temporary a temporary, filling. okay, so a temporary filling was on that tooth and it removed. And so um, I needed to cover it up again. So that was when I went to, Choice Dental to meet with Dr. Shadi. And she explained to me that, yes, I should do another root canal, but that is not what will save the tooth. I actually needed to put a crown on it. And the other thing that she did was she did an X-ray. And I will say that anybody that goes to see a dentist must do an X-ray because an X-ray is just like going to a hospital and they say, we want to um, take your temperature, your blood sample. We just want to do check you generally and know what's wrong with you. And so that was what uh, Dr. Shade did an x-ray and she was able to see everything that was happening in my teeth. And she said that you don't only need to do a root canal. You have some cavities. We need to do some fillings. You have um, your wisdom, wisdom tooth at the back that didn't come out correctly. We need to take it out. If not, it will pack, food will be packing there and it will, could cause an infection. And then you have a hole in your tooth, just like you had in the other one and you have to do a root canal again. And um, she also emphasized that your tooth, your teeth is something that is going to live life and you have to take care of it. Because as you get older, they get weaker. And you don't want a case where you've got it to a certain age, maybe 60, 70, and you're having loose teeth and your teeth, they're all falling out. You can't bite bone, you can't eat because you didn't take care of your teeth. And that really stuck with me. So after that, we registered for a family plan. And I took my husband and my two kids and you know, we went to the dentist and we do a routine checkup every, like, every three months, we go there every three months. So the x-ray really showed her everything that was happening in my, in my teeth. And she's been, she, she treated, you know, we, we spaced out the treatments. I did some treatments. And then now I just go for routine checkup and routine cleaning. So when and you, my family- and you, and you maintain your beautiful smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm guilty somewhere. Oh, let me tell you where I'm guilty. So Dr. Shade said we must brush morning and night. I brush every morning. I don't use, um, after I met Dr. Shade, I used to stop brushing <laughs> hard. I, I stopped brushing hard. I now brush, uh, my, my, my brush is more gentle. Like my husband, my husband doesn't brush. I see he's fighting with someone. His brushing is very gentle. So I stopped doing that. Um, but one thing I, I don't do regularly is I don't brush at night. And Dr. Shade said that's very, very important. Brushing at night is very important. So um, one of the things that we do is at home is we floss. 
My husband flosses a lot. We have a packet of floss somewhere. We floss a lot. We brush well morning and night when I remember. But my son and my husband, they do it every night. They just remember. I don't know how they do it. And um, we, what again, we, we, we also drink a lot of water. We drink a lot of water to you know, clear the mouth and all that. So I think that's basically what we did and routine cleaning. So when we go to the house, to the clinic, you know, we clean our teeth regularly. That's basically what we've been doing. Wanwala, can you share with us what do you think were the causative factors? What, what do you think caused you or made you, have those, made you have those cavities in the first place? Number one, I wasn't going to see a dentist regularly. I didn't grow up in a home where dental health was very important. So I believe that if I had started seeing a dentist earlier on in life, I would have had you know, such cavities. Um, you know, what usually happens to most people is that they only go to the dentist when they have a problem. And Nigerians actually need to know that oral health is as important as doing your eye test or as important as taking your vitamin C. It's very important because without going to the dentist regularly, the teeth can't talk and um, they don't show symptoms when they just start. It must be very deep and must have been there for a very long time before it starts to show. So I believe that if I had started seeing the dentist earlier, I, would, I wouldn't have had such problems. That's number one. Number two, I'm not really a sweet tooth person. So I'm not always chewing sweet or chewing chocolates. But one habit I know that I didn't have when growing up was brushing at night. Yes, we watch it on TV, the TV adverts, our parents tell us, but brushing at night wasn't one of my habits. So I feel that if I had started brushing earlier, um, the, I wouldn't be sleeping with dirt in my mouth. Um, I think those are the two main reasons why that happened. And when, when I started feeling the pain, I didn't attend to it on time. I would just take Panadol or, you know, just take something or just gargle with salt and water. That's salt and water thing that people do. <laughs> Hey, people need to be careful. So I'll just gargle with salt and water. My mom said, just take salt and water. And I just think, oh, it's gone. But it's actually, it was actually deeper than that. But I'm grateful to God that then I made a decision that I wouldn't remove my tooth. I would do a root canal. Because when I met with Dr. Shadi, she told me that when you remove one tooth, your teeth start to space out. Because the tooth that has been removed the place can't just be bare. It's just like you buy land and you leave the land. And trees will grow on it. So what happens is that other teeth start spreading out to fill up that place. And then you start having spaces between your teeth. So she said it's, it's not usually advisable to remove a tooth. If a customer or a client comes to her, a patient comes to her, she tells the patient, do root canal first. If the tooth can be saved, let us do a root canal. It's more expensive, but it would, it's, it's more value over the years. And that is what I have, I have gained. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go and put a crown on my root canal because I don't want that tooth to break. That's excellent. Thank you. A last Thank one. You. What advice would you give to anyone listening today on how to take care of themselves? I would say that you should brush morning and night, drink a lot of fluid, and please see a dentist. Don't think that, ah, it's too expensive. The truth is that the money you spend on buying clothes, buying shoes, traveling, and doing other things, you can actually, you won't spend up to that, up to that if you're going to see a dentist. See a dentist, know what your dental health is saying, know what your teeth is saying. And when you see a dentist, please don't just go to any dentist. I've been to other dentists. And to be honest, Dr. Shade is the first that I know that does x-ray. When they were, when they put the x-ray metal or the thing in their mouth and they say, clench you, ah, what, what is this? They said, no, we have to do an x-ray. We need to know what is happening there. I said, wow. So please go to Choice Dental if possible, but make sure you do, you take an x-ray of your teeth so you know what is happening there and you can treat everything easily. The, 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 the cavities I had before and the feelings and the holes I had before, I don't feel anything now because of all those holes, Dr. Shadi has put sealants on all of them. Even my daughter also had 
the same issue I have with this root canal. She's eight and, um, I, I, and she did a root canal also. I said, but Dr. Shade, she, the tooth is going to come out now. She's going to still grow the adult tooth. Why don't you just take it out? And she said, no, I can't leave a space there because of that, the, tooth, the tooth at the top will start growing and it will be long. It will be looking like the incisor in front. It will be long because it has to cover up that space. And so my daughter also did a root canal. My daughter eats a lot of sweets and she's like her mommy. She doesn't brush her tonight. But now, you know, with seeing Dr. Shade preventing dental care, our teeth at home is really getting better. Even my husband also had a bit of a challenge with um, one of his tooth in front. I can't remember what it's called. Dr. Shade will know what it's called. There was a time that he was bleeding. And, you know, we went to see Dr. Shade. Dr. Shade treated it and she said that for my husband, he needs regular cleaning. But after doing the x-ray, she said that my husband's teeth are actually good, but that the one that was bleeding was, was shaking, was a bit weak. And to save that, that tooth, he needed to be doing regular cleaning and flossing, and he needed to be brushing morning and night. And he has been doing that, and I haven't seen him bleed in, 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 since we started visiting Dr. Shadi. So Dr. Shadi, thank you. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You, thank you, Wanola. Thank you, Dr. Kiyode. And thank You're you welcome. very much for that endorsement. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. So, yeah, Dr. Shade, Dr. Kiyode, yes. can you, that was a wonderful testimony of someone who, who has really benefited from your care, your total care. And um, okay. I think she also highlighted some of the issues about having sweets um, maybe as a pointer to some of the things that she has done in the past and obviously her not brushing at night is also an issue that perhaps she had in not you know in in, in terms of what could have caused her cavities in the first place but I think she's a real uh, you know uh, like an ambassador for how to now <laughs> take care of you know her teeth, teeth going forward and I think that's wonderful so we talked also about that. And so do you have anything else you want to add after we've spoken to her? Yes, definitely. Now, um, I know young kids, they tend to drink a lot of um, um, sodas, the acid drinks, Fanta, Coke. Once in a while, I do have some. But these things can also erode the teeth and cause sensitivity. In some cases, they can even cause holes in the teeth, especially when taken in a great amount. The other thing is um, sticky candy, or even kind a lot of candy, or even just um, a lot of plantain chips, the sweet type, because it's sticky. Now, though, though, this sticky um, candy, they tend to sit in the pit and the grooves on top of the teeth. And remember what I said about the plaque, the dirt was now settle in those pit and the groove because the surfaces of the teeth, the top layer of, of the teeth is not flat. It has those pit and grooves that could trap dirt. And so the, the food gets trapped in those areas. And if you don't floss to food gets trapped in between the teeth, and you tend to have cavities. So those people that take a lot of sticky food, sticky um, um, candies, they tend to have, and they don't brush regularly or floss, they tend to have um, a lot of cavities. Thank you. And what about the smell? We've talked about um, the cavities, but I know a lot of the people are sensitive to smell and would like to know, what would stop people from having bad breath? And what would stop people from having bad breath? Now, the saliva is very, very important. Um, when Ola did mention drinking a lot of water, you want your saliva not to be ropey. You want your saliva to flow freely so that it cleanses the mouth. When the saliva cleanses the mouth, it gets rid of plaque. Chewing in itself also has a cleansing effect on the mouth. So if you're not chewing on one side of the mouth, you tend to have plaque settling on that side of the mouth and um, you, you, you tend to have bad breath. 
calculus, like I said, plaque uh, stagnating in the mouth, all these things will cause bad breath. If you're not brushing off or flossing off the dirt around the mouth, it will cause bad breath. Not um, clean your tongue properly will cause bad breath. So you have all these things coming together. So that means you just need to take good care of your mouth. The mouth is so important. When, you, when you're talking to someone, you're close to the person, you tend to, they can smell you even though you cannot smell yourself. Yeah. That means you have to and have- And it can be very, very embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing and nobody wants to tell you except the really, really close people, people that love you. Otherwise, nobody will tell you. And you could live a lifetime having bad bread, people running away from you and not telling you anything. But of course, if you go to the dentist and um, the dentist sees all these things in the mouth, the calculus, everything, the, the, the dentist will remove all these things if proper x-rays are taken and um, you tend not to have bad breath. Oh, thank you so much. This has been very educational. Can you, we only have a few minutes left in the program. I just want to ask a bit about smoking. Is, is smoking bad for you? And bad for oral, bad for your oral health? Yes, smoking is bad for your oral health. Smoking in general decreases the amount of blood supply to the mouth. And um, it tends to also dry the mouth. Remember, I said that when the mouth is moist, you tend not to have much, um, you tend not to have bad breath. Smoking in itself creates mouth odor. And then you now add to the fact that your mouth is dry. And then smoking also could irritate the gums, the oral, the tissues of the oral cavity, and in some cases cause cancer. Um, I know um, um, I, most people have heard this over and over again, but it's important to try to stop smoking um, as soon as possible But because it's just not good for your health. And then when you do have an extraction, especially a wisdom tooth extraction, you tend not to heal very well. You tend not to heal fast enough. And you could actually have another type of infection called dry socket. Wow. So most of the time we tell, tell people, if they happen to smoke, not to smoke for the for 20, at least 24 to 48 hours after an extraction, so that that way they give their mouth a break and the mouth can heal very fast. Okay. So smoking is definitely not good. Now, unfortunately, our time is up. Do you have any quick last words for our listeners? Yes. The teeth are supposed to be there for the rest of your life. Take good care of them. Don't be miserable when it comes to um, chewing or eating time because a lot of people in Nigeria cannot chew. They can't eat well. Don't be one of them. Make sure you're taking good care of your teeth. It's very easy to prevent. It saves you a lot of money, time, and efforts. Just trying, just struggling to um, keep up when you've neglected the teeth. So make sure you take very good care of your teeth. Don't neglect them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.